Three months of incessant fighting. The last strong point for the Red Army. A prophetic name. The Red October Factory is the most emblematic landmark of the fighting in Stalingrad. The Red October Factory. A video by Stalingrad Battle Data. The tractor factory was captured by the Germans after two days of incredibly hard fighting, the Barakati factory after two weeks. But the Red October factory was never really completely captured. Its giant structures and jungles of tangled metal, which gave it the look of an alien landscape, was the stage of a relentless fight that ended only with the final capitulation of the Sixth Army. Oldest of the three great industrial complexes in the city, the plant was founded at the end of the 19th century in 1897 by the French company Ural Volga Metallurgical Society on the outskirts of Stalingrad when the city was called Zauritsyn in Tsarist Russia. Renamed the Red October Steelworks after the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917, the plant was fundamentally reconstructed during the years of the first of the five-year plans between 1929 and 1940 and turned into a base for the production of high-quality steel for enterprises in the automotive, tractor industry and agricultural engineering. For the Stakhanov five-day competition in 1936, the plant reached record production figures, like most industrial institutions, keen to avoid the ire of the Soviet regime. On the first day, its furnaces produced 2,033 tonnes of steel against a norm of 1,653 tonnes. By increasing the rate of production and mastering new brands, the enterprise became the only metallurgical giant in the south of the country. The plant was awarded the Order of Lenin in 1939. By the beginning of the war in 1941, it was responsible for 10% of all steel produced by the defense industry of the USSR. And just like its two sisters, the Barakadi and Tractor Factories, the Red October Factory became a strategic provider for the army as the war went on. The Germans reached the Volga near the northernmost part of Stalingrad on August the 23rd, 1942. The fighting for the Red October factory began exactly two months later. In the fighting for the city, the Red October factory was the last major objective for 6th Army's 51st Corps, as all others had been captured after two months of merciless struggle. Chuikov's 62nd Army headquarters was located just a few hundred metres from the southern part of the factory with nowhere else to go, since by this date the Soviets defended only a few strips of land along the Volga River and this was the largest one remaining. The task of seizing this last strong point was assigned to von Schwerin's 79th Infantry Division to begin on October the 23rd. Now the factory's name could refer not only to the Red October bloodshed of the year 1917 but also to that of the year 1942 because it was no less terrible. The approaches to the plant were defended by the remnant units of Smekotvorov's 193rd Rifle Division and the factory itself by Gureyev's 39th Guards Rifle Division, soon reinforced by Sokolov's 45th Rifle Division. On October the 23rd, 51st Army Corps reported In the morning, after a powerful artillery preparation and the attacks of dive bombers, 79th Infantry Division launched an offensive southeast toward the metallurgical factory. By 0900 the first objective was reached, the railway on the western border of the plant. However, due to an unforeseen deterioration of the weather in the form of cloud cover, air support vanished. The assault groups of the division made their way to the centre of the plant in heavy fighting and reached the large workshops in square 71A1 
and 72 C3 by 1430. According to unconfirmed reports, one assault force of two companies actually made it as far as the Volga. Major General N. I. Krylov, 62nd Army Chief of Staff recounted, Beginning on the 23rd of October, the Red October factory became the enemy's main target. It was the oldest of the three Stalingrad industrial giants, and the last still untouched by enemy soldiers. It was not difficult for us to imagine that the enemy, stuck in the Barakadi factory, would try to break through on the neighbouring sector. Then, Schwerin's 79th Infantry Division appeared, a division which had previously operated against the Don Front, and it was known that this elite division had recently been reinforced. Defending the factory also meant protecting the Volga landing stage, without which the army could not exist. The main defending force was Major General Gordiev's 39th Guards Rifle Division. Major General Smekotvorov's 193rd Rifle Division, by this time reduced to a third of its normal strength, had the Red October factory on its left flank. The Germans began their offensive with a night attack, which was repelled. In the morning, after a powerful artillery preparation, infantry and tanks attacked several areas at once, on the right wing of the army. It was soon determined that the main strike was aimed at the factory, towards which the enemy put forward its new division. It looked almost the same as a week before. The bombing was just as tremendous and caused the greater part of our casualties. Communications were broken, but due to our proximity, we were able to maintain connection with Goriev and Smekotvorov, and we could only say that they fought valiantly. On October 24th, 51st Army Corps reported. In the afternoon, the offensive of 51st Army Corps with forces of the 79th Infantry and 14th Panzer Divisions against the Metallurgical Factory and Bakery was unsuccessful because of the stubborn resistance of the enemy. 79th Infantry Division seized workshop number 7 in square 61B2, a group of houses in 71A4, and cleared the previously occupied territory from nests of resistance. At the northwestern corner of the metallurgical factory, an enemy incursion has been warded off. On October the 25th, 51st Army Corps reported, the offensive of 79th Infantry Division did not take place because one enemy battalion attacked from the oil tanks towards the workshop number eight at 1200 and another two battalions coming from the northeastern part of the metallurgical factory broke through to shop number five at 1400. The connection between regiments and battalions is lost. On October the 26th, 51st Army Corps reported. In the morning, forces of the 79th Infantry Division went to the attack in the northernmost part of the metallurgical factory and overcoming stubborn enemy resistance seized the southern part of shop number five, both shops number one, and northwestern shop number nine. In the course of the day, the division repelled several Russian counterattacks, supported by strong mortar fire coming from the northern part of the plant. On October the 27th, 51st Army Corps reported, the left flank of the 79th Infantry Division and Jaeger Regiment 54, overcoming stubborn resistance, reached the line of industrial buildings in square 72 C1. Two days later on October the 29th, 51st Army Corps reported, early in the morning the enemy broke through at the junction of the 14th Panzer and 305th Infantry Divisions, making it impossible for an offensive at the metallurgical factory and east of the gun factory. After clarifying the situation, 79th Infantry Division put forward one assault detachment to the northwest, seized shop number three and reached the high building to the southeast. 14th Panzer Division repelled two attacks from the area northeast of the metallurgical factory against the sector of Jaeger Regiment 54. The attack of the enemy against the left flank of Panzer Grenadier Regiment 103 southwest of the oil tanks led to a breakthrough which was eliminated by 1200. Afternoon, our own counter-attack began in the direction of the Volga bank, which pushed the enemy back until the front line reached 150 metres from the river. 
305th Infantry Division, after settling the situation on its right flank, also went on the offensive at 1300 and advanced with great difficulty due to the fierce resistance of the enemy. And so it went, day after day. During one month the Germans were slowly gaining ground, even though counter-attacks often recaptured the lost territory. From December it was the turn of the Soviets to slowly reconquer the factory. The seesaw struggle continued until the end of January 1943. When the fighting in the city had ended, the plant was completely destroyed. Its reconstruction was put under the leadership of Paruya Matavosian, and less than six months later, on July 31, 1943, the Red October factory commenced its first smelting of steel, and on August 31, produced the first ton of rolled steel. By 1949, the pre-war level of production was surpassed. The plant was awarded the Order of the Red Banner of Labor. The plant received its current structure and final specialization in the post-war period. The main production facilities were launched in the 1950s and 1970s. By 1986, the plant had a production potential of 2 million tons of steel per year and 1.5 million tonnes of rolled steel. It produced 12% of the country's high quality steel, including 14% of all stainless steels. The plant was then awarded the Order of the Patriotic War First Degree for services to support the Soviet Army and Navy during the Great Patriotic War. In the range of products of the plant, there were 500 grades of steel produced according to the standards of the Russian Federation Germany, the USA and Japan. After the collapse of the USSR and corporatization, it was consecutively owned by several different companies. In 2003, Midland Resources, the largest shareholder of the Ukrainian metallurgical plant Zaporizhstal, acquired 100% of the plant. During the next five years, the plant was undergoing reconstruction to expand the production of alloy steels for special purposes the number of employees reached 8,000. In 2007, the plant was purchased from Midland Steel Industries by Rus Petstal, which also bought shares in the bankrupt Barricadi plant. As a result of the recession which began in 2008, the Red October production volumes fell four times, and overdue accounts payable skyrocketed. The uncertain economic situation persisted for 10 years with new owners. However, at the end of March 2019, just a few months ago, the 120-year history of the plant came to an end. By decision of the Volgograd Region Arbitration Court, the company trading house of the Volgograd Metallurgical Combine Red October, owned by Red Ol Volgograd Metallurgical Combine, was declared bankrupt. We know not what the future holds for this iconic structure. One building of the factory complex, however, the lab, was not restored after the Battle of Stalingrad and became one of the three city buildings left as monuments, the other two being the mill and the command post of the 138th Rifle Division on Ludnikov's Island. And just as they stood then, so they still stand alone today, covered with snow or wildflowers as the seasons pass by, silent witnesses to the most terrible conflict in the history of mankind.